kind of uh, continuing on with our international type theme. Next presentation is going to be about Mo Norman. Uh, unfortunately, just recently, Mo Norman had a problem and was, is not able to join us, but we do have a fantastic video uh, about no, Mo, Mo Norman and uh, with Mo, Mo Norman speaking. Uh, very, very interesting golfer, has some very, very interesting theories. Uh, many of you have heard about him, some of you have not, but he was a, he's a very fascinating individual in the world of golf. Uh, the moderator for this is going to be Craig Shanklin. Uh, let's give a warm round of applause for Craig Shanklin, please. Good morning, everybody. What a fabulous thing this is, and especially for me because Norman von Knight is my godfather, and I haven't seen him since I was seven. So it's a very special week and occasion, and uh, we love him very much. Mo Norman, I'm sorry he could not be here. Um, anyone who knows Mo, this kind of experience would frighten the heck out of him. Um, but we did it with videotape. He truly is the world's greatest ball striker, quote unquote. He's a living legend, a golfing wizard. Tom Watson said he may be the most commanding ball striker in the game ever. George Knudsen said, Mo is the most sensitive player in the game. Peter De Bruyne said he's the greatest golfer who chose not to become a champion. Mo Norman rewrote golf's fundamentals. He has his own set of them and they work. He's never missed a shot in his mind and I for seven years haven't seen him miss one either. Imagine, he says, how many millions of golfers the ball is choking to death every day. Not me, he said, not me. He has such a crystal clear understanding of and confidence in his own golf swing and abilities, and he can putt. He shot 59 three times, and once at the age of 62. Imagine that. When most people are trying to break 100, he broke 60. He beat you by 41. Golf, he says, is hitting an object to a defined area with the least amount of effort and alert attitude of indifference. Imagination plus vividness equals reality in your mind, he says. I'm sorry he chose not to be here, but he did graciously allow us to videotape him. And this videotape that you're going to see is the result of five hours of continual ball hitting, which at the age of 65 is remarkable. It was my task to go and edit out some of the hundreds of comments he makes during and after every shot. It took endless hours, 20 actually to be precise, and it was impossible to get everything he said in. We attempted to do some of that, and now you're going to hear and see the world's greatest ball striker. I keep everything so simple. And I get the same angle of attack on the ball every time. What about this shot in terms of importance, Mo? Well, this, this, this is a main, to me, this is the main club in the game. This is the one that takes the pressure off the putter. This is the guy that can take, turn bogeys, double bogeys into bogeys or bogeys into pars. If you can get down two from here, to that sign, that's where you really save the strokes. And this is the only club that has variation. Every other club is one distance. A wedge is from 110 yards back to a five foot chip. And that's, that's strictly feel. You gotta learn how to feel, feel it in the hole. Hit it in the hole, feel it to the hole. This is what I do so well. I, I, feel, I feel the ball. I feel it to the hole. My imagination, and then, then I do it. Show a little bit of, uh, 
show us a little bit about your grip, the way you hold the club, which is so essential to your performance. It's so good. It's so different. Well, I'm, I'm the only person that grips it in the lifeline of my right hand. I, I'm the only golfer living that's got, the, got it right up the lifeline of my right hand, not in the fingers. That's too flippy. I'm, that way I can't lose my angle. My arms are nothing, never twist. They're never twisting. It's pendulum. The ball goes dead straight every time. Your left hand, what do you do with that now? We've, we've got a, a two-handed grip, right? It's not a baseball grip, it's a two-handed grip. Right, that's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm the only person that plays with one straight line in golf. I'm the only golfer living. Where's that straight line from? Okay. Yeah. Keeping, the, keeping my fingers out of it, because I'm not in no fingers. I'm just palms and palms, arms and wrist. And the ball goes dead. Show the camera about the angle of your right arm and hand, the angle of your right hand up your shoulder. Right. This is all wrong. I, I'm right, right there. Why is that all wrong? The one in the fingers. Too, many, too, too much room for error. You can play a tune. Where, where, where's, where's the tennis man? If you play tennis, where do you put it? In the palm of your hand. You don't put it in your fingers. Baseball batter, where does he put it? Doesn't put it in his fingers. It's in his palm, where the meat is. What's the most sensitive part to your body? The palm of your right hand. That's the most sensitive part to your body. What was this story circulating about one tournament you played in in Canada where you teed off first with your wedge and then hit your driver? What is that? Is that a true story, man? Oh, yeah, I did that many times. Did you? Sure. Just to give myself more variety. I was leading the tournament, get up to a driving wedge hole, hit my second shot first, and my first shot second. Make a par of birdie and go to the next hole. Oh, a lot of times. When was the last time you, you missed a fairway, Mom? Just over seven years now. All I see is the middle of every fairway, and that's right where I hit it. I never see the bad things, only the good things. That's all I ever see. So you said that another thing about ball striking too was hitting into your left hand. Let's see your left hand. Would you show the camera your left hand, Mo, where your callus is? Because that's hit so many balls, seven million balls or so, four million balls. And look at that callus, and that's really where the left hand takes the hit, isn't it? Oh yes, way up here for me. With big grips and E3, yes. And then, oh yes. Mm-hmm. Part of great ball striking too is where the divot comes with irons. Where, where do you in your mind, where do you see that happening? The divot, way past the ball, 22 inches. I, I picture in my mind the ball's way up here. Now make sure my blade is still square, way up here. 22 inches, past the ball. My blade is still square. I'll take 500 balls with a 7 iron, there'll be no dirt on the toe. Not, a, not, a, not one piece of dirt will be on the toe of my club. Nope. What are some other elements in your ball striking ability? Because it's, it's the crispness of the sound of the ball striking in the middle of the face with the divot coming after the ball, right? Yes. And how those things are achieved in your swing. Tell us why you stand so far away from the ball and why your arms are so straight. Maybe that's one of the things that you do so well. It is a secret to solidness and impact. I, I believe that's why I'm the best striker is I'm 12 to 14 inches away from my body with an iron. With a driver, I'm 18 to 20 inches away. I'm the only person that's got more freedom with my iron. My, if I'm this far out, I can't. It's much easier to do if you're in here where you can, where out here you can't. That's why, that's why I got a, such a one-piece swing, just because I stand so far from the ball. I know I couldn't do it as good if, if I stood like everybody else. But, but that's, that's what I do, why my club doesn't get offline, because I'm reach, I'm always reaching out. I got the same eye-hand-body coordination 
with every club. So that at impact, when, when you're at impact because you're so stretched, does that solidify impact? Does that make impact even more solid? Oh, much more solid, yes. Never flippy. Can't. Cause, and then I'm pulling so hard. I'm pulling so This is doing nothing. My left hand is just pulling like mad. Watch. My right hand's only going along for the ride. You're not a throw swing, you're a pull swing. Oh, yes. Back, pull. I never want the hit impulse. Only the swing impulse. Swing to the finish. I don't believe this crap. Ho hit to the finish. No, swing to the finish. Swing that dumb guy to the finish. Here, I'll swing to the finish. The ball goes dead straight, and it's so simple. Touch wood, I've never been sore in my life. I've been over four million of these things and never had a pain in my life. How about the stance? Uh, tell us about the stance with Mo, because it's unique. And it's, you stand, you not only reach, but you stand very wide. Um, why? It gives me, gives me more stability and less moving parts. Big thing is less moving parts. You can't make as many moving parts there as you can there. There, just one little touch in your here, you're more braced. I always like my shoes outside my knees. Outside, not inside my knees. Oh, I hate that. I hate to see any man with his shoes inside his feet or knees. I want them outside my knees. I lose distance, but I'm dead straight. My hands can't, your hands can't waver or lose their angle of attack as much if you're wide as you can narrow. Even though I'm a small person but I still like to be braced. You've got two good braces, your, your stance width and your arm stretch. Those are two of the best, right? Oh, yes. Then I keep all that through my swing, right through my whole swing. Tied into that, the stance width and the arm stretch, then why does the club start so far behind the ball? I know, it's just something I did when I was a kid. I got up one day and started pointing it there. and. Now I feel I could not hit the ball if I put it here. Plus, it eliminates a lot of things for me. What are those things that it eliminates? First, first thing, I can't pick the club up. Second thing is I can't can't take it outside. And the third thing is my right shoulder is already in my turn. Look now, look, look. And I'm eliminating one foot of the swing. And it helps to give me a lot of lateral motion, a lot of lead and lag, which I do so well. What's that lead and lag? Explain that. Oh, well, I, my body, look where, look, where, look where my body is. Look where my hands are yet. It's never that. It's always, I'm the only man that plays with a straight line through the ball. I'm the only golfer living. That my mind is straight. I see that straight line. All I see is one straight line. Right through the center of the golf course. I'm the only golfer living that swings through the golf course. Everybody swings around it. I always picture two railway tracks. I'll swing right down, keep my hands right down those railway tracks. And look at my... I figure... I, I put in my mind that there's electricity in the track, two tracks. If my arms go over it, I never feel a shock because they're always in between them. They're always in front of me. I'm the only golfer that does that. My hands are always in front of me. Back and through. Back, now through. They're always in front of me. In other words, in my swing, I'm the only golfer that's never putting more loft on the club or de-lofting it as it was at address. It's always arriving at the ball the way I address it, not arriving at the ball that way or that way. It's always... I'm the only guy that returns to the ball the way I address it. I'm the only golfer living. I returns there. There I'm in. I'll t return there. And the ball goes dead straight. Pure and simple every time. 
The simplest move in golf? I'm never tied up. I'm never tied up. I'm free as a bird. I'm just as free as a bird. Watch. The ball goes dead straight every time. I can't hit it crooked if I want to. My swing won't let me. And I'm the only golfer living that gets the perfect flight to my ball according to the club I'm hitting. Seven iron's not low or real high like a nine iron or low like a one iron. It's always seven iron flight or whatever club I'm hitting. There's 51 feet to be exact. That's how high that one went. Here's, here's 161 feet. Now, now here's, here's 181 feet. See? I'm the only golfer living that plays in height. The way I want the ball to hit the green. I play in height. See? Here's 100 feet high. Hit it way up in the air. Here's another 100 feet high. Reach for the sky. There's no hazards up there. Only human nature. There's no hazards up there. The hazards are on the ground. Hit it over top of your hazards. But I, I never think of hazards. I don't even know what's. I don't even know what's out there. I only see the good things. My mind only sees good things. Pars, birdies, and eagles. There's no bogeys in my bag. None. And I proved it in my day. There was, how many bogeys you make today? None. What a silly question I used to say to the reporter. What do you mean bogeys? What's that? I didn't know, I didn't even know they existed. What about using your whole self, Mo? Ooh. Tell me about that one. Do you use your whole self or what? I do. Oh, yes. I, I'm, I'm probably the only golfer that does. At the right time. I'm the only golfer that uses my whole self at the proper time, not one trying to this or this or this. I, I'm, do, I'm doing the proper thing at the right time. Otherwise, I wouldn't be the world's best striker. What about this left knee? The left knee uh, before impact, do you want it past the ball? Oh, far as I can. And bent. And bent. Never, never, never want that. I want right, right there. there. So the left knee is past the ball before. Oh, way past. And bent. Where I'm always in a sitting position. Where my club can't come off the ball. It's driving through the ball. My left foot takes the hit on every shot I hit. My, my big toe on my left foot never moves. Stays right on the ground every shot, back and through. Would you call yourself a left-sided player or a right-sided player? Left. I'm left-handed and everything, yeah. What's the first thing that passes the ball? Not your right side, your left. Here, here's the first thing that passes the ball on every shot you hit. Your left eye sees it first, everything. Left hand's leading the right. Certainly. Here's left side control. <laughs> Purify any better than that, I'll eat your head. So your, your left foot never moves then? Oh, I should say not. All this crap. Oh, gosh. To me, that's so many moving parts, you don't have to make to hit a little golf ball. You don't have to do that. To hit a golf ball? Are you kidding? How can, how, the, how can they call it timing, balance, and coordination in your... <laughs> Holy Moses. <laughs> if that's timing and balance, and balance I quit. <laughs> so what about lifting your feet? You'd sooner would do what? Rather than lift, what would you do? Oh, I roll my ankles. Roll I roll them. How, how do you do that? Show how you do that. Never. Never that. No. Oh. I never want a wrinkle in any shoe. Never. Back or through. I never want any pressure. 
in my feet. I never want to walk into your clubhouse and my feet are sore from hitting balls. No. I can still go in there and dance. They're never sore. No, I roll my ankles. Watch. What's the master move in golf, Mo? My vertical drop and a horizontal tug. Let's see that. What, what would you show us if you saw the vertical drop and horizon, uh, horizontal tug? That's the master move. Right here. First, first foot comes straight down. The, the club is going further behind my back on my downswing. This is pointing. Never this. It's always. My left arm's way higher than my right. Way higher. You can always put the club in this way. Never, you know, the other way that would fall there. My club would always fall. Never in front of me. Always back behind me. Here's the master move. The feeling of greatness. I'm the only golfer in the world who's got the feeling of greatness. The only one living. Feeling of greatness. Right here. Oh, is that pure? Ooh. I don't believe in hip turn. Shoulder turn, not hip. hip my hips hardly turn at all. But my shoulders turn. That's another reason why I had it so straight. And, but main reason, that's why I hit it so solid every time. There's no hip movement. My hips can never pull me off the ball. Like most people do. Watch. Just as pure as the driven snow. But big thing, no effort. No effort. No effort at all. Tell us about the business area. What's the business area, Mo? Swing's only three feet long from here to here. That's your business area in this game of golf. It's how you arrive here to here. Make sure you arrive there the way you the way you're supposed to, right? That's where I arrive so good every time. Three feet from behind, from three feet behind the ball, just three feet in front of it. My club stays on the level of the ball. Because you have such great extension going back and extension going through in the business area, right? So oh yes. So what, what was the coin doing? What was that there for? That's kept my muscles, stretching my muscles. This is what I used to practice by the hour. With my driver. Kick. That's how far back I want the club on the ground. With my driver. And then 22 inches past, I used to put two tees up and make sure I hit the tees with the blade square. Not. And that's what I see now. I see all that now in my imagination. And the ball goes dead straight every time. And pure. Pure and straight. In a, in a very simple way. The ball goes dead straight every time.